Media. Thank you all for coming this morning. I'm Christina Moore, the Communications Manager for the District of Squamish. And um, just to let you know how this morning is going to go, we're going to have remarks from each of our special guests here today. And then we will do a uh, signing over here at the signing table for photos and a photo opportunity. And um, afterwards, there will be an opportunity for mingling and questions. Um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Councillor Chris Lewis. Uh, spokesperson for the Squamish Nation to welcome us here. Patsquale Tanoya, Siams, Sikwetos, Si Tokton, Queen Snas, Kohova Shokamel. Just really want to honor each and every one of you, respect guests, chiefs, matriarchs, friends acquaintances on behalf of I see my auntie here on behalf of the citizens the elders the chiefs and council of the Squamish nation I formally want to welcome you to our unceded territory of our peoples we have lived and prospered in this area now known as Squamish since time immemorial I'm reminded of our teachings that get handed down to us from our elders and our parents about our inherent responsibilities to take care of Mother Earth, to take care of our lands, our waters, and our resources. I want to pay homage to each and every one of you for honoring the invitation. And I want to tell you a little story that my grandfather said to me while we were driving up the Sea to Sky Highway. He said, from the moment you opened your eyes, you've inherited all of this. It is yours, along with all of your nation cousins and relatives. He goes, so take care of it. You have an inherent responsibility to take care of the land and waters for the future generations of our people. And he goes, that's your responsibility as you walk this earth. And he goes, and then when your children are born and your grandchildren are born, they will take the torch to take care of it. We have many stories that surround this great place that remind us of what happens when we become out of balance with the natural rhythm of the land. When we forget our sacred connection to the Creator and to all living beings. I'm reminded of the flood story where we tied our canoes to Inchikite, which is now known as Mount Garibaldi. I'm reminded of the story of the salmon people when the salmon did not return and that we had to go great out into the waters and figure out why they weren't coming back. I'm reminded of the stories and the origins of the ice ages and why the ice ages happened. All of these stories are immortalized in our place names in and around this area in Skohovich territory. And all of these stories have an underlying teaching that we carry as Squamish people. That when we're not respecting Mother Earth and living with the natural rhythm of the land, the Creator brings these things such as floods, plagues, ice ages, the salmon don't return. The teaching from our elders in these stories is that we must return through innovation, through partnerships, through adaptation, our people have thrived. And we've never done it alone. There's always creatures, mythological creatures that help us along the way. Our partners, friends. So I bring us to today and this great opportunity around carbon engineering because the Creator is now telling us again that we may be out of balance. 
And the Squamish Nation is really pleased to sign this cooperation statement of cooperation today with all of our partners because it is our responsibility to get back to that natural rhythm. And through working with Adrian and Michael and other levels of government, mayor, the province, that I think we will get there. It's not going to be done by one party, it's going to be done by everyone. And that it brings back that teaching that goes back from time immemorial, that we need to get back to that natural rhythm. And through partnerships, innovation, we're going to create opportunities for our people to thrive, be the solution, create opportunities for an economic and education hub at this place so that we can all move forward together and create a sustainable future for our future generations because we're all here to stay. Again, on behalf of the elders, the chiefs, the chiefs and council of the Squamish Nation, I wanna thank you for coming today and joining us and welcome to our traditional territory, Osia. Thank you, Chris. Um, as always, it's, it's always hard to follow the Squamish Nation because they, their words are so profound and meaningful. And we are on the uh, traditional territory of the Squamish Nation, uh, right here in the heart in Squamish. We like to call it the heart of the Squamish Nation. I hope that's okay. Um, this is really the culmination of a community vision that started probably about 10, 11 years ago. And um, kudos go to the community for being steadfast in this vision of having an educational campus down here on the oceanfront property. And so, um, from my point of view, you look at all the work that past mayors and councils have done, the community planning work that went into this, and it really is an exciting moment where we can actually start to say something really profound and important is going to happen down here in the oceanfront. Not just for the community, but from a global context. The partnerships and the collaboration that's happened here, and I, I look to Walter and UBC, is going to be game-changing on a world context. We're bringing some of the brightest minds here in the world to solve human, perhaps human civilization's greatest challenge. And that's a pretty daunting task, but it's a pretty empowering place for a community of our size to be. So I, I don't want to uh, go on because really this is about celebrating the community's vision and being really positive about where we can create jobs, where we can create this hub of innovation in our community. And uh, I really look forward to this moving forward. I think it's gonna be very, very exciting. Thank you. Uh, good morning. It is always a privilege, really, to come to Squamish to enjoy the natural environment. And uh, it's truly a pleasure to be here this morning. Driving up the highway, you know, it's uh, very easy to remember why we are all here, really. Uh, affordable and accessible energy has changed the lives of people around the world. Uh, since the 1990s, access to energy has been a factor in reducing poverty by about a half. And yet, uh, approximately one billion people around the world live without access to the most basic energy services. So, Finding energy solutions would be desirable even if we didn't have the prospect of global climate disruption due, uh, facing us. And the importance of this grand challenge really became evident in Paris late last year. Uh, Canada, as you probably know, championed an initiative to aim for keeping the global increases in temperatures below 1.5 degrees Celsius. And the actual agreement that was signed to keep them below two degrees is historically significant. It means that the world's largest producers of uh, carbon emissions are going to have to cut their emissions by about 80% by 2050. The economic implications are in the trillions of dollars. Now, the government agreement was quite significant, but in my view, what was more significant was the emergence of three new entities. The Breakthrough Energy Coalition, led by Bill Gates and his friends, and that entity is trying to disrupt and change the innovation and investment cycles for clean technology. Mission Innovation, which is at the moment an alliance of 20 countries who are going to coordinate their public investment in climate change solutions. 
And the other interesting entity is a new task force announced by Canada's own Mark Carney, who is currently on loan to England to run their bank. And they have created, uh, he's, he's the chairman of the Financial Stability Board, and they have created a new task force to look at climate change risk exposure for companies. And energy companies like Exxon are already feeling the consequences of that new way of looking at things. So the world has really changed. And in my view, these, these uh, entities that are being created are perhaps a turning point because energy technology, unlike information technologies, requires typically longer times and larger amounts of capital to be developed. And these entities that are coordinating efforts have created a new framework that hopefully will bring changes in the energy system architecture that used to take centuries to decades. So I am really excited to be here today because I think the kind of partnership that we are announcing today that brings different levels of government, academia, industry, and community really together is part of the innovation. The innovation is not just the technology, it's the way of working together. And I'm really happy and looking forward to working with our partners here to make Squamish a global center for innovation, education, and research. Thank you. So good morning, and uh, thanks everyone for, for coming, and welcome to Carbon Engineering's, I think, hopefully permanent location. So uh, I just wanted to say a few things, and one, I wanted to start by saying that, you know, every now and again, you find yourself, you know, in that point in time where you're in the right place, in the right time, and surrounded by the right people. And, when carbon engineering showed up here in late 2014, it was clearly one of those times. And uh, you know, I, I think that what's apparent is, and why I know that that's true, is that in, in a matter of the last 18 months, uh, we've accomplished so much. And so even as you can see here, what we've got is, uh, in a matter of a year, a piece of technology that is really the foundation for what we're going to do going forward. So this air capture technology is is this first step, and, and for those of you who haven't had a chance to see it afterwards, uh, come and see me, I'm happy to take people around. Uh, but the reason we've been successful is because of, the, because of the tremendous amount of support that we've received from folks uh, here at the district, from the Squamish Nation, from Newport Beach Developments, and from UBC, and, and, and also the province. Uh, what I'd like to specifically thank is some specific people, or you'd like to thank uh, Mayor Heinzman, and Walter, and, and, and uh, Jordan, uh, Michael and Chris. I actually think that again in the matter of a year we've become a really good team and I'm looking forward to working with you guys going forward. Uh, going forward I'm hoping again that it's going to be more good planning that, uh, than luck that takes us forward and you know and, and I think it'll allow us to continue to advance the, the scientific and commercial objectives of carbon engineering and, and allow us to, to thrive here on the waterfront. So we're, we're committed as carbon engineering to do our part to support the growth of the clean tech sector. Uh, in BC, but in particularly here in Squamish. Um, just let me conclude that I'm, I'm really excited to be part of this consortium, and I'm really looking forward to being part of a, of a meaningful and permanent uh, success here in Squamish. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. It, uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and thank you for the invitation to attend. Um, it's, it's such an exciting time and it's an exciting to make this announcement but here for Squamish for the the ocean front and what this will do for the ocean front the development of the ocean front generally I think we've all been waiting with bated breath for how many virtually decades now and it's really nice to see it actually get to a point where it's it's beginning and it's uh, going to be such a hub and start of so many exciting things here in Squamish the, the MOU that's being signed today is another important piece that will, will provide an anchor, a potential anchor anyway, to clean tech, to innovation, to um, education, to um, knowledge-based economy here in Squamish. And this is really what, what needs to happen, and I, I'm so looking forward to it. Um, we have, as it was mentioned, I have been working on, uh, as the chair of the climate leadership team for the last, um, since about a year now, and we put forward 32 recommendations for government to consider, many of which are, are, are part of what we're talking about today. So this is a really, this, this dovetails so well. I will mention that the province is, is not part of the MOU 
uh, at this point. And I very much look forward to being back here. We're, we, as Adrian mentioned, we have contributed uh, into the, the carbon engineering, um, the development of their proposal and, a, and an analysis of it. And I hope that we're back here in the not too distant future to, uh, to further um, invest in, in this exciting opportunity. But again, in a, on a bigger scale, when we look at the partnership between UBC, the District of Squamish, the Squamish Nation, and uh, Newport uh, Developments, um, I very much hope to be back here in the not too distant future um, with, with more to say and more to commit to. So thank you very much and congratulations on all the partners. Uh, see, I'm in CIA. Dear friends and family, I wanted to sh share the song, uh, Siopalup song, being a welcoming, welcoming this opportunity, you know, to our to our area, to our territory, to our province, and to Canada. So this is the welcoming song, Siopalup song. <coughs>